will tell me if they are in or if they are out. And you guys at home, you guys can play along. Here's the first one. With a win over the Seahawks on Saturday, Kyle Shanahan and the 49ers are now just three wins away from a Super Bowl trophy. He's been there before, but he never got to hoist the Lombardi. And, of course, mm -hmm. they went to the NFC Championship a year ago, mm -hmm. and he was a part of the 28-3 crew in Atlanta. Here's the statement. A Lombardi trophy for Kyle Shanahan would do more for his legacy than any of the other seven head coaches left in the playoffs. Are we in or are we out, Jason McCourty? A Lombardi would be huge for Kyle Shanahan, but I am out on this one. Andy Reid is still in the playoffs, and Andy Reid's coaching career has been phenomenal. Ranked fifth all-time in regular season wins, and then he is ranked third in playoff wins, and he's only one win away from moving into second behind Bill Belichick and as you look at that list of these playoff wins for these head coaches a lot of them have all of them have multiple Super Bowl wins Landry Bill Belichick Andy Reid only has one he's been there three times an opportunity to get the second one get into that conversation of multiple Super Bowl wins with a quarterback like Patrick Mahomes and what they have on that roster gives them a chance to win a few of them and when they won back in 2019 that's what we were always saying how many Super Bowls can Andy Reid win yeah, yeah, with yeah. this quarterback yeah. Patrick Mahomes it's only been one so far uh -huh. I think for his legacy he needs to get multiple Super Bowl wins with Patrick Mahomes I think this year is a great opportunity to do that more than the Shanahan legacy Andy Reid to me I want to a clarification on these answers that like if we pick a coach it's not I'm not saying that I think he is going to win I don't think like his yeah, path yeah, is easy it's like if he wins yeah, yeah. if Doug Peterson yeah, wins another Super Bowl talk about his, uh, he is on a list with Dick Vermeil, Don Shula, Dan Reeves, Bill Parcells they, the list goes on of coaches that have led two teams to Super Bowls but to mm -hmm. win with two different teams and the teams in which he got there that Philadelphia Eagles team and the quarterback situation he went through there, this Jaguars team, what he took over. If he were to win in those two franchises, the teams that he had mm -hmm. in those seasons, again, he's going up against our guy uh, mm -hmm. with multiple statues mm -hmm. in a lot of Winston different Churchill. places. Yeah. Yes. Winston Churchill. Exactly. We were in London and we were talking about if Doug Peterson wins a Super Bowl with Jacksonville, would he get a second statue like yep. he has in Philadelphia? And then we're like, How, who has more than one statue? We just had Winston Churchill has like seven. Yeah. yeah. yeah so maybe he'll get there eventually. He might get one in London as they are the Jaguars second oh, year. Incredible. Doug Peterson next to Churchill. Yeah. <laughs> well, he'll win a Super Bowl with Jacksonville, and then they'll fire him a couple years later, and then he'll sure. win one with the Texans or something. Uh, awesome. Peter, I, I'm out on I'm out on Shanahan. Shanahan already has this crazy amount of respect, and he's looked mm -hmm. at as like a genius. Uh, I think Sean McDermott already has looked at it kind of a legend because he broke the playoff drought, and he has the Bills in the playoffs. Peterson, we mentioned. Dayball's interesting because mm. if Dayball wins the Super Bowl this year, he'll be like the new McVay, like the genius, like mm. the uh. really. But listen, I'm, I'm going last night. I'm going to Big Mike. I'm yep. going to Mike McCarthy <laughs> because I mentioned all those guys. Uh, some of those guys I mentioned don't even have Super Bowls. They all have a lot of respect. I don't know what the respect level is from Mike McCarthy generally and whether that's wrong or right. Jamie was listing people who have two Super Bowl wins as head coaches. Doing it years and years apart is very rare. Normally you stack them together in a nice little bunch. You got the same quarterback, maybe the same team. If Mike won one with Dallas and did what about 50 other Dallas catch coaches could not do under Jerry Jones, and if he did it with Dak Prescott, Mike McCarthy, Peter, then the Hall of Fame conversation starts with Mike McCarthy. Yes, yes. Them's the rules. Yeah. You have two Super Bowl wins. You have tons of other wins. Yeah. You have Hall of Fame players. Can you imagine that? It's amazing what a couple of playoff wins will do for you. I think it's Mike. I I think it's Mike also. Do you? And I think, yeah, because I think Kyle Shanahan gets that ultimate respect and mm. everyone yeah. says, well, he's, Mike is often, you know, he's always on the hot seat. Every day he's on the hot seat. If they go 13 wins, they go 14 wins. If they lose in the playoffs, on the hot seat. Mike winning last night was huge. And I think to your point, to win two and bookend them for 2010 and then 2023 yes. with two different teams yes. and two legendary franchises. True. You got to put Mike McCarthy in that conversation of like, not only great yeah. coaches, but like, one of the all-time grades. Can I throw another name at you? Yeah. Zach Taylor. Gosh. Back-to-back -back Super Bowls. He wins one. He brings the Bengals to Super Bowl. Then it's like, geez, Zach Taylor in this AFC would be amazing. Yeah, especially at his age. Yeah. yeah. He's a younger guy. Can make a case for all of them, huh? Yeah. I interpret the word legacy more to the Mike McCarthy experience, like the longevity of it. Yeah. Like Zach Taylor is just at yeah, the beginning, yeah, yeah. like when I think of the word legacy. Yeah. 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 Such a cool career. Like Peterson and McCarthy were both yes. fired. 
Like, that's mm -hmm. cool to go yeah, back and win. Cool. All right, let's go uh, to the second question here because we really got into Lamar yesterday, and I think it's still a hot topic. Mm -hmm. We'll be dissecting all the stuff about Lamar, his injury, the offseason, but let's take a first whack at it right now as we're two days removed from the Ravens being removed from the playoffs. Here's a look at some of the potential free agent quarterbacks this season. Now, of course, guys can be franchise tag, they can be exclusive franchise tag, they can be non-exclusive franchise tag. There's a lot here. Here's my statement. The Jets yeah. should do everything in their power to acquire Lamar Jackson this offseason. Are we in or are we out, Jason McCourty? So many variables dictate this, but Lamar Jackson's health down the stretch. We talked about this, and not just the knee this year, but ongoing. There's been practices missed, all of that, illness, different things. I'm in. New York Jets, if you can go get Lamar Jackson with the way their defense played this year, they rank at the top of every stat you can look at defensively. Points allowed, yards allowed, top five in all of those things. As soon as you flip over to the other side and you start looking at the offense, they're at the bottom of the NFL in every category. They just moved on part of ways with their offensive coordinator, so that opens up the door to get somebody that can run an offense that best helps Lamar Jackson, Jackson to succeed, and they have weapons on the outside, probably more than he's ever had at Baltimore, which would allow him a ton of success. New York Jets, you're ready to win right now. If you're going to give up to go get Derek Carr, somebody like that, if you have an opportunity to go get Lamar Jackson, go all in, put your assets up, and bring LJ to the Big Apple. Mm. Yeah, the Jets moved on from Michael Floor. They also moved on from their offensive line coach, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a new look mm -hmm. on the offensive side of the ball for the Jets. I am also very far in on this. I think it would be hot fodder within the AFC to have Lamar Jackson come to New York, but I think if you have the money and you have the investment capital to do so, revamp your offensive line, get guys in there. To Peter's point yesterday, you said the Ravens have built this team around what Lamar can do. Go out and get a couple of guys for your trench that can work with a quarterback that can run, get an offensive line coach that knows how to handle the situation. And he's still has a long future, Lamar mm. Jackson does. You can build your team now. You can do it with the wide receivers that you have and the defense that you have mm. and the coach, the head coach that you have. I'm in on it. I mm. love this option. I like the idea of the Jets getting a free agent quarterback because I don't trust them to draft another one. Mm -hmm. We can only have so many whiffs. <laughs> like, go out, go out and get somebody. True. I think I like the fit with the team. How do you like the fit with the city? L Lamar is extremely mercurial, the no agent thing, the mysteriousness about his health condition, all that type of stuff. I don't know how that fits in New York. And I don't know if, it, listen, he seems like an awesome guy. His teammates are singing this week about how much they love him. I just know how that works sometimes. I've seen guys come to this market, and it's not an overrated thing. The knives are out. It's much much more intrusive, much more exploratory in every single mo moment of your career and your life. I don't know if Lamar would like that. I don't know if the media would like that. Of course, he's a great athlete. You put him out there in the Jets, and it sounds awesome. They have a superstar. Is it a, is it an eight, nine, ten year thing with Lamar Jackson? Because that's what you're paying him for. I don't know about the, if I like the fit. I think it's a certain type of athlete, and I think he likes to live in his own world. You don't do that here. Yeah, unfortunately, let's you can't. say the Ravens franchise tag and put one of those franchise tag, what would usually be if it's one of those non-exclusives, not again to the contract yeah. minutia, probably have to trade two first yeah. round picks mm -hmm. and pay him $250 million. So it's yeah. a huge investment. Economically speaking, do you rather have Derek Carr and say, okay, we trade to the Raiders a third round pick and we restructure his contract? That's the only thing because once you give all that money mm -hmm. to Lamar, then do you have the money left to, to, keep, read, yeah. to pay Garrett yeah. Wilson eventually. Mm. To Speak pay. to the solid Williams. Williams. What's, what's the fit oh, there? He, think, wants, he wants, he likes this I think solid would dig Lamar. Superstar? I think, I think so. Yeah. Superstar, tough, yeah. and like mm -hmm. runs and, mm -hmm. and, and plays in a way that is that is really advantageous for a defense because he can control the yeah. ball. I think yeah. I think it's a great fit. But the city thing's interesting. You know, remember when Randy Johnson came here and he was this big superstar. Don't talk big, back to me. Get out of my face. He pushed a camera guy down. Yeah, Lamar's not doing that. not Lamar, right? But like, even 